Next to the Irish coast, this large crumbling power station sits abandoned and has done since it was decommissioned in the late 1970s. The building offers beautiful architecture that you won't see in any structures of the same use nowadays. It truly is an industrial marvel. From a picturesque location, vast empty spaces and detailed control rooms, exploring the power station was like using a time machine back to a forgotten past. After a fairly long walk, we reach the destination for today's episode. It is a gargantuan facility that sits in an industrial estate by the sea. The multitude of active buildings nearby means that there is a lot of security dotted about, so we use a strange route to make our way onto the power station's grounds. Built in the late 18th century, the property was constructed with red brick. However, to keep up with the constantly increasing demand for electricity, it was always getting added to, which is why you can see other materials on the structure like steel and concrete. Today, only one of the 12 chimneys remains and a large portion of the site has been demolished to make way for newer buildings. Inside we weren't expecting this, there are three main parts to the structure and two of them consist of huge stripped rooms where nature has slowly developed over time. Even though it is absent of any machinery of sorts, the giant ferns and bushes that have grown make for some beautiful scenes. We assume this was the space for the boilers which were removed at some point during the power station's 40 plus years of dereliction. It appears that we visited this site in the perfect weather, as some of the lighting making its way down through the damaged roof was incredible, causing hopeful areas in the mostly dark building. As boats moved by outside, we had no choice but to chance a sighting as we moved from room to room. Now we were no longer in the sight of security though, so this was a small concern. Further ashore you can see the newest power station that only opened in recent years. You may have noticed the dual chimneys of red and white that stand out from afar. Although they are close to the abandoned site we are visiting today, they aren't linked to it in any way. Actually, they are part of a third power station which replaced the one we are exploring, only to later close and be replaced by the modern one we just looked at. All three of these buildings show the passage of time, particularly with the materials they were built with. Even though it's not connected, we still look towards the second power station as the more modern structure and its impressive chimneys are quite intimidating from low down. Inevitably, we found our way into another part of the vacant site we're focusing on in this episode. Currently, we are underneath what we anticipate to be the turbine hall, and we want to find a way up. 
Down here it is very flooded as the water has been carried in through the upper floors. Some old signage can still be found but quickly we are distracted by the staircase upwards we have been looking for. The turbine hall is magnificent, a ruin of what once was. You can see the spaces where the turbines would have gone and can imagine how grand the room would have looked when it was generating electricity 24-7. We noticed the arched brickwork, the tiling and the small curved windows which are all dated features that have been extinct in this field for decades. If we were to look in the other power stations nearby they wouldn't have anywhere near as imposing a turbine hall as this one once did. Since decommissioning in the late 70s, the negligence to this complex has caused internal decay, which is clear where you can see moss forming on the brick, as well as dangers that make the power station unsafe to visit. This place is a death trap. Look at that. Huge holes all the way down to the lower floor. Down there. We left the stunning turbine hall on the hunt for the hidden room that would have controlled everything that went on inside the space. It seems that the building's location has helped it stay clear of vandals because we don't find many signs of unnatural destruction, light bulbs remain untainted and hanging still. You can appreciate the decay in sites like this because when the wallpaper begins to peel the fading brick behind it becomes apparent once more. An ornate banister is an unusual find in an industrial site, however it becomes clear what lies above when we make our way upstairs. This is the central control room for the power station and it's by far the largest one we have seen to date. A curved interface in the control room was something we were yet to discover but this place offered a beautiful long panel complete with most of the original buttons and switches. Our main issue with this room was how difficult it was to take pictures because of the rays of sunlight shining through the gaps in the control panel. We still tried nevertheless and here are our results. Remember to follow us on Instagram if you wish to see more of our photography. We post pictures of places we explore months before you will see them on YouTube. The curve of the control room is even more visible when you take a trip behind it, around the spherical corridor. Intricate wiring shows how complicated the panel must have been to operate, no one has had the struggle for almost half a century. Through the windows near the control room we could see the turbine hall at an elevated perspective which showed its true size. At
at this point, we had been inside the power station for over three hours, and it was now time to head out, shattered after our three day road trip with little sleep each night. As for this site, there seem to be plans to convert it into a hotel, but at the moment there are disputes as to what company will be hosting the building's renovation. With it situated in an ideal location overlooking the bay, this would definitely make an interesting development, and we hope that if it takes place, we have captured the memory of what the building once was and its importance. Next time. As we mentioned previously, we weren't finished filming at the abandoned asylum featured in our first Irish exploration video. There were more buildings at the site, and one of them provided us with some amazing discoveries. Thanks for watching our latest episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Remember to turn our notifications on to never miss a video. See you next time.